this time together. Um, so I want to welcome you, and I know this is about the covenant land of Israel. Pray the Israel mandate, um, bless the covenant sites. Very excited to hear from the speakers that I know Jerry has brought forth uh, that are speaking. Uh, share with us about each of the altar sites, as well as uh, some scriptures, perhaps to Jerry. I know you wrote that in. So, uh, but before we do that, let me open this up in prayer. Actually, um, yeah, I'll, I'll open this up in prayer. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise your name, Father. We love you, God. We love you, O God of Israel. We love you, O Captain of the Lord of Armies of Hosts. We praise you for who you are. You are a faithful God. You are the righteous one. We just praise you for you, Lord, and especially the season that we are in. We're in the season of Pentecost, Lord, and we praise you for the Holy Spirit. And so we thank you, Holy Spirit, that this is the season where we remember that you poured out your spirit in, in fire and went over the upper room, Lord, and as well as subsequent Pentecost, therefore, after that, but we praise you, Lord, and we say, come Holy Spirit, we're asking for the fire even today, so that God, we can do and be able to be strengthened to do what we have to do, Lord, as far as what you tell us to do, and to see the breakthrough, Lord. So we praise you, and we thank you, I plead the blood of Jesus over this call, over this Zoom call, and I praise you for everything that will give you glory, Lord, and we do give you that. Not to us, not to us, but you goes to glory in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. I forgot to hit the record button. Let me just do that real quick here. Okay, we're recording. So again, I just want to say for the sake of the recording, this is a gathering of, uh, of intercessors as well as uh, people in the office of apostle, prophet, pastor, etc. Uh, and we are going to be doing what we call Covenant Land of Israel Pray, the Israel Mandate, Bless the Covenant Sites. So with that, um, I just want to turn it over to Jerry um, just to share your vision and mission and then I'll go ahead and introduce everybody. I want you to share your heart about how this all came about and then we'll, I'll go into introductions. Know him, not about him, know him. We're talking about a great spiritual awakening. And the Lord, so, you know, the Lord is himself going to initiate this. But he's asking for Israel to come back into her covenants. And what's happening right now with Prime Minister Netanyahu is so vitally important. He is extending sovereignty over all the Jewish communities in the West Bank, which is about 30% of the West Bank. Many of the covenant altars where covenant was made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it was made in the West Bank, and that's what they want to give away. And so God bless Netanyahu and our president who said, I will back you on this. But what is, what is the church's part in this? Well, there are some of these covenant altars that America has been involved in, in wanting to give away, uh, trying to give away, going back to what they call the pre-67 borders. And there are some of these covenant altars that the Jewish
Jewish people don't know how to claim and extend sovereignty over. And so I believe the Christian church is given, being given authority to extend sovereignty over that which the Jews cannot. And so we're repenting for what we have done in the past in terms of breaking covenant or encouraging it. And we're coming back to that place where we're standing in covenant with Israel and say, no, the altars, covenant altars in Israel belong to, those, to the Jewish people and to God. So what we're going to do today specifically, uh, we're going to pray over three of these altars. Uh, on Mount Moriah, you know, there are several of these altars. And uh, it includes the cross, it includes the garden tomb, it includes, um, you know, the Temple Mount. And then uh, also Bethel, which means house of God. But at the same time, we want to pray just o over everything that's going on with extending sovereignty in Israel right now. God is preparing the world for final outpouring of his Holy Spirit. You know what it says in Joel 2.28, 20, right? Uh, in the last days I will pour it on my spirit and all flesh, your sons and daughters will prophesy. But you know the verse before that, verse 27, you know what it says? He will be seen in the midst of Israel. That's the preparation. We know there's a preparation for Pentecost, don't we? And, uh, and this is all a part of that. So, um, Mary, that's kind of an introduction over an overview. Thank you. And uh, so go, go ahead and introduce. Okay. As we're here together, and um, there, we don't really know each other, I just felt it would be great to at least introduce ourselves and um, a little bit about your ministry and, um, and just take about a minute, okay, so that we at least know each other by name and where you're from and how you know me or Jerry or however you want to do it, okay. So, Linda, can we start with you? Yes, um, my name is Linda Taylor, and um, yes, I have yes. been with the Carolina Strategic Fair Alliance with Mary Medford uh, since uh, 2012, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, since that time, um, the Lord has had us on some awesome initiatives, but shortly after I came on board, the first initiative dealt with uh, one of the first ones with our alignment with Israel. And it was an awesome time. So I've always had a heart for Israel. And also I am, um, I also have a uh, ministry here in Bath, North Carolina, um, that uh, I steward. And it was called Winds of Change Ministries. And it's right here in Bath, which is the first incorporated town. Uh, in Bath, North Carolina. So I'm very excited to be with you all today, and thank you uh, for having us, and just excited to see what God is going to do in our midst. Thank you, Linda. All right, Laura? You're next. Laura <laughs> Judah. Um, I live in Leander, Texas, which is right outside of Austin. I've uh, been in this area for Fifteen years now, and um, God called me as a prophetic intercessor in the heart of Texas House of Prayer uh, back in 2012, and so that was kind of my main thing was just leading intercessory prayer, and at the same time, um, with a strong heart for Israel, I was homeschooling and teaching my kids. Uh, Israel was a prime focus of what we did in our school. And that, um, really, even prior to that, I had, just through reading the Word, I had gotten very excited about the Feast of the Lord, and I spent many, many years, um, probably since 2005, studying feasts. In 2015, I was able to write a book on the Fall Feast. Um, never had gotten to the Spring Feast thing yet, but that's kind of been my heart. And so, um, the last two years, I've kind of been sitting on the sidelines, and I just met Jerry a couple of weeks ago, and I feel like this is God calling me back into this role as an intercessor, like, it's a, it's a, 
in a completely different format, but it's coming alive in my heart again. And so I'm very excited mm -hmm. about that. I'm excited to be associated with Jerry and his background and his his love for Israel and the authority that he carries in Israel. And so, um, yeah. Amen. Nice to meet you, guys. Nice to meet you, too. Ramona. Hold on, I'm going to unmute you. Where'd you go? Yeah, there. Okay. Oh, there we go. You, you lost your picture, though. Uh-oh, hang on. You skipped over because Debbie got your thoughts. <laughs> Let's see. Uh-oh. There we go. All right, there. Good. Um, Okay, um, my name is Ramona Cox, and um, I am a part of uh, Mary's Network, Strategic um, Prayer Network, and um, I've known her for uh, since probably, I think, in 2015, latter part of, early part of 2015, no, actually 2016, um, and so, um, and I am um, a uh, part of a um, ministry called World Harvest Ministries. Uh, my apostles, Apostle Alvin and Alva Green, um, are um, actually under John Eckert's ministry. Um, and I'm an ordained prophet in our church. I lead um, the international prayer um, um, ministry, uh, which... Um, is um, something I've been doing since gosh, 2000, <laughs> and so um, I'm a prophet intercessor, um, and um, it's just a privilege. I love Israel. This is an awesome um, opportunity for us to agree together and speak into and decree um, over um, Israel. All right. Thank you, Ramona. I'll skip over to Deborah there. You guys trade the places, so you get to go next, Deborah. <laughs> so, um, I'm in Austin area. I live right outside of Austin um, in the city called Pano. Um, I was, I met Gary about six years ago, and I was called out. Of, the Lord called me to open up an house of prayer. I didn't even know what that was. So, I, I um, was in a house of prayer uh, ministry. And I went to Israel um, with Jerry and his groups um, three times. So it was really a process for me to kind of learn. I had no idea what we were doing when we first went there. Um, he was given mandates, and I was like, it right over my head. But the Lord, it settled in my spirit, and um, I have a great love for Israel now. I totally understand the... Um, what, you know, God's love for Israel and his people and what he's trying to do in his covenant promises. So I'm totally on board with those types of things now. And um, so I do intercede for Israel and as far and also for my area and this area, Austin, also involved with uh, deliverance ministries um, through a ministry called Before 18. Um, you do deliverance ministries. So that's awesome. Uh, are intervening and that sort of thing. So that's, uh, that's basically my ministry. Oh, thank you, Deborah. Good to meet you. My husband, Jeff, you're next. Well, hello, Jeff. Uh, I've been aligned with Mary's ministry since she took <laughs> on my last name in 2003. <laughs> so uh, it's a joy to be aligned with her ministry. <laughs> and uh, we love Israel and uh love the peace and uh, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and uh, you know it's just a great to be uh, involved and to be called in advancing the kingdom so uh, it's exciting to be here and let's go get them <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say it's great to be aligned with my husband too <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I just never thought I'd say it that way <laughs> any way of saying it to Mary now we have Wallace Hello there, Wallace. Jay, look, I don't know your last name. Just introduce yourself. Uh, Wallace Johnson. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. We can hear you. Yeah. Um, so I'm in, I'm, I'm based out of Oklahoma City. Um, I happen to be divinely here in um, at the Book of Acts Mount Church here in, in Brownwood just for the weekend. 
So I didn't know the Zoom call, I didn't know this, but uh, I lived in Israel for a bit, and I, I've been mm-hmm. in Hebron, um, one of the, the sites that one of the, the sites we're talking about. So when I found out about this, I was like, yeah, I'll get on this call. So I'm glad to be here. Uh, Matt, I think I've met you before. Uh, yeah, your, your picture I, looks familiar. <laughs> I don't know where, though. Yeah, I think I met you in North Carolina. I spoke in a house meeting, and uh, I think were you in Bobby uh, Jacuzco over a uh, North Carolina Prayer Network or an accessory group? Like the. Well, let's put it this way. It, I, was, I was leading Mission Carolina that was a purple of North and South Carolina um, for a time. Um, that was from 2005 to 2008, and then I started Carolina Strategic Prayer Alliance, but I'm also a state leader for the, um, uh, the North Carolina uh, Governor's Team, the National Governor's Team for North Carolina. I'm also a um, North Carolina leader for the Har- Harvard Apostolic Prayer Network through Dr. John Benefield. Mm-hmm. in Oklahoma City, and then um, the last one is the United States Reformation Prayer Network. I'm North Carolina leader with that with Michael Simi J. son of Joe's International. You're quite busy. <laughs> well, we kind of merged together. At one right, time, right. JP and RPN were together, but anyway, I don't, you know, I don't know if any of those strike a bell or anything. Yeah, well, what, all I know is that my uh, Lord released me to start speaking again um, those years ago. The first place I spoke was in North Carolina, and when I got there, uh, I spoke to uh, – a group of intercessors on a Saturday morning, and I shared with them what the angel over North Carolina needed of them and requested them. Oh, and a yeah. person looked like you was taking notes, very you know, typing up the notes really clearly. And I, I when I saw your face, I was like, I wonder if that's her. And it's, it's were you, were you uh, connected with Tamara Jarvis? Yep, it's you. That's it. That's it. Oh my gosh. You're that's the praying so mystic or something. I forget your name. I mean, it, yeah, <laughs> it, it was you. Yeah. And I, that was a wow. Yeah, that was a very long time ago. But that was a long time that, that Chuck Pierce kind of named you guys, um, what'd you say? Um, the Gate of the Nation. The Gate of the Nations. And um, when I came in there, I, uh, uh, that's his one. Anyway, so hi again. And um, it's good to be aligned strategically and spiritually. And the fact that God would bring someone to, I was living in Virginia back then. I now live in Oklahoma. And I was ordained in Texas uh, last year. And then I just met Jerry this year. And so we both have a heart for Israel. So God is awesome. You know, they're so lying people like, yeah, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, I'm still connected with Tamara, too. She and I have uh, been revamping our connection again. But anyway, that's so neat to know that you're, yeah. you're the wow. one. Yeah, <laughs> wow. I'm the one. You're the one. <laughs> All right. All last right. but not least, David Schoen. David. Good. How are you? Very well, Okay, well, thank you. I thought I saw Margie over there, but what by yeah. you? Jerry, is she is she there? Yeah, hang on. <laughs> Hi Margie. Hello. <laughs> I had your name down here, but where'd she go? <laughs> Good to see you. Are you gonna be be participating? Yes, we are. Okay, you're going to okay, good. I'm glad to see you. Good to see you. Okay. Thank you for introducing ourselves. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for just a little bit about it, every one of you. And I feel a, a kind of connection, which is what I love to do, you know, whenever we get ready to pray or get into some um, really strategic prayer. Amen. All right. So um, as far as who's going to be presenting, um, I just, um, I you might have to help me out because I try to take notes off of your emails, Jerry. Um, but we have um, Jerry. 
doing the cover altar of Golgotha, and then Prophet Deborah Taylor doing Beth El, and then Dr. Laura Judah doing Temple Mount Altar. I don't know if there's any order that you wanted in, Jerry. Does yeah, it matter? That, sure, that's fine. Okay, so, so why don't you go first? Oops, okay. And uh, okay. Hope, hopefully, you know, we're going to present, pray, but we want everybody to be able to feel like that once we present an altar, they can jump in and pray as the Spirit uh, would lead them. And I think what I'd like is that we go through every altar and pray because you know, some of this information is quite new for some of us. And so that way it'll be fresh and then we can get into the Spirit and pray. Okay, good. <laughs> so the, um, as I mentioned, Mount Moriah, there's so much on that. And uh, it, it includes Golgotha, the cross. It includes uh, the tomb of the resurrection. Uh, it includes Temple Mount, which Laura is going to talk about. But I want to talk specifically about the cross. I think about how um, Abraham brought his own son, Isaac, and offered him as a sacrifice. And then God, at the last moment, stepped in and provided the ram, provided the sacrifice. That was a picture of what would come when he would provide his own son as the Lamb of God. And the son, of course, was announced by John the Baptist, who said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so I would like to turn, um, turn into a prayer and declaration uh, this particular altar and have you agree with me. Is that okay? Yeah. Father, we lift up the altar of Mount Moriah to you, the place where Abraham brought his son Isaac for an offering. You provided a ram sacrifice, letting us see that one day you would provide the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God was announced by John the Baptist, who said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This altar reminds us that you are a promise keeper. The lamb was crucified on Golgotha, on the hill, and the lamb himself declared, it is finished. The debt was paid for the price of sin, redemption of man. The blood of the Passover lamb was applied for mankind. A covenant was made in the blood. The sight of Golgotha forever witnesses to this covenant. David bought a threshing floor on this mount on Mount Moriah, not far from Golgotha, to build an altar to God. And when he did so, it turned back a plague against the people of God in 2 Samuel 24, 18 to 25. The cross is the power of God to those who are being saved, we're told. Foolishness to those who are perishing. Lord, there are those who would steal and claim this covenant site. We, the body of Messiah, say no to this evil scheme. We declare all of Mount Moriah, including the, the temple, belongs in the hands of the Jewish people. Forgive America, the church, for the land for peace agreements yes. that would divide the land and scatter your people. We gather this day on May 30, 2020, to covenant to stand for Israel, her covenants and the lands, to say, we will be watchmen on the walls. We will watch over all the covenant altars in Israel. We declare the covenants of God will be protected and guarded by the church. We extend sovereignty and authority given to us by Christ, who said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And we bind the plots of the enemy to steal these covenant sites. And we, and we loosed an agreement with covenant over the land. And so, mm -hmm. Father, we thank you this day as the body of Christ that we stand with Israel and we stand with these altars. And we thank you for recognizing and blessing what's happening today. And, Father, I want to see the reality of that Isaiah 62 promise where for Jerusalem's sake we will not keep quiet. For Jerusalem's sake, we will not be still until her righteousness goes forth as a blazing torch and all nations will see her glory and all kings. Father, that we will be watchmen on the wall 
Right. And we will not be silent day or night until you fulfill all your covenant promises that you've given in your word. And we declare this today, Father. We're here as watchmen. We ask now that the watchmen of the world will rise up, take their place, and, Father, you will accomplish the, the purpose for which this scripture speaks, that you will fulfill every covenant promise that you've made in Israel. We declare in Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. I want to decree something over that. I'm just getting something. Um, I've been in, ironically, I've been in the uh, major prophets and really just reading a lot um, through Isaiah, Jeremiah. And time and time again, um, whenever a covenant was broken, it had to do with idolatry of the land and the worship of the males. Um, and I just sensed that, you know, as I read that and as I this thought of what we're doing today, um, there's a sense that there's some kind of legal access that that's there that um, where we need to close that somehow. <laughs> and um, so I'm going to just do this and because I'm, I haven't been to Israel, but I'm, I'm, and I also believe that the people of the land have got to rise up too. Um, I'm just going to say I bind every kind of principality and power that's around these altars, this one that we've talked about today, because we know, Lord, um, this altar, Lord, of Mount Moriah, Lord, where the cross was um, was there, as well as its rusty floor that turned away the plate that David put there, Father, and where Abraham offered Isaac God, which you know, showed that, Lord, you were the God that provides. You, you disclose yourself as that, Lord. We just, we just say, first of all, we repent. Of anywhere for anyone over that altar in the history, and I'm not going to go back too far. Lord, but I want to say before 1967, um, and even at the inception of, of Israel as a nation in 1948, but anywhere where there has been a worship of Baals there, uh, which defiled the land and which the people permitted it to come into that place. We would want to say we repent to that on behalf of Israel, Father, and the church there in Israel, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And we just also want to repent that we have forgotten, Lord, um, how you do provide. We haven't trusted in your provision. Yeah. And, and remember where it came from, Father, and how we, um, we the church, has even um, been adul adulterous, Lord, in terms of who we should be worshiping and following, Lord. And so we do want to repent of these things, the idolatry, Father, that's been committed, Lord, there at this first altar, God, in the name of Jesus, which can't nullify the cross, but certainly, Lord, it, 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 doesn't, it, just, it just causes a legal access to be given to the land. And time and time again, even in the prophets, when it writes how the, you, Lord, just sent the armies to invade Israel, to invade Jerusalem because of the covenant that was broken. So we say, Lord, we, we, we offer up this repentance. And I say this because, Lord, this ministry is part of the house of prayer for all nations through Robert Henderson, Lord, and all those that have an international ministry like Chuck Pierce in Jerusalem and everything, and now Jerry with Israel International Work. We stand in that place united as a house of prayer of all nations, including Israel, God, which is the first nation, God, the root nation, God, and we just say we repent, God, and ask for your forgiveness. And because of the, what Jesus did on, this, on the cross, and for, and for the sake of this altar, what it means, we will appropriate the blood, and we receive the forgiveness and the redemption and the restoration of this altar, Lord, to its, to its original purpose, God. And we just thank you that it, in the process of it, whether you're going to show us the steps and how to continue to remediate and to build this altar and to secure it. But we thank you for this day. And this is the first day where we're, we're decreeing things or into the spirit run through the gate of this nation. So on behalf of America, we say we embrace this altar and all the promises thereof. And we just decree that your promises will come to pass. They do not return void. And Lord, we just say the covenant will be restored and this will no longer be a problem. And the sovereignty will be extended over this altar in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Any more, Jerry? Did we want to let others pray over this altar or move on? Okay. 
Yeah, does anyone have anything else? Do you have anything? You want to decree? Do you have time to decree over this altar? Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. So we'll go on to the next altar uh, with Prophet Dr. Deborah Taylor of Bethel. Deborah, there? You want to share? And then we'll pray. Not sure. Um, so. I've, I've been to this altar, so this is really nice for me. Um, we actually, um, I went, I was there, and we did a little altar there, and, um, and prayed there, and we were speaking for Israel. And so, um, Jacob, of course, he was in Beersheba, this is where he fled to Bethel, and um, returned to his covenant with God, and he held on to, you know, you know the story, he had a dream, and um, we saw angels descending and ascending from heaven and being um, blessed with the angel. And he said he wouldn't let the angel go unless he was blessed. And the angel made covenant with Jacob there. And um, I was reading a little bit about it, and they say that he returned a covenant there, that Jacob returned to his original covenant at that place. And I think that's important. So I was just going to declare a decree that Israel will return to its original covenants there at this place, that we call this, this out for Israel, that every Jew that doesn't know the Lord right now will will know him. Like, like Jerry um, said at the beginning, know him in their hearts, not just see him, but know him, and that he will be completely revealed to all of Israel, and that... that um, Israel will turn, return to their covenant that they originally made with the Lord and accept the Messiah as their Savior. We just pray this with love for Israel. I just, I think the Bible comes through love, and we just, I just pray that Israel will just know this deep, like the Song of Solomon, this deep love that the Lord has for them. That he will not let them go. He will not let them go. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. Anybody else have anything? I'm just sensing this. Someone needs to pray through the fact that this is where this, this stairway, he had a, Jacob had a dream uh, with this stairway, and that, that the angels of God is ascending and descending on it. So, Linda, I had you in mind. Yes. <laughs> for, the, for the angels. Yes. Father, we do, we, we cover this right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Um, and we realize, Father, even Bethel, uh, the house of God, but yet, Lord, there was a gateway to heaven yeah. that was a uh, poor yes. lane, Lord, even as Jacob had the vision of the angels ascending and descending, Lord. That even, Father God, uh, even of this day, Lord, uh, as we're thinking about Pentecost and this season, Lord, that there is angelic activity, Father. Lord, from the heavenly realm, O oh God. Lord, even messengers, Father, being sent uh, to assist and uh, and even uh, come alongside as we are praying and decreeing today, Father. Lord, uh, for this uh, time of uh, recovering, Lord, and declaring, Father, the sovereignty, Lord, of your word and your covenant promises, Father. And so, Lord, even this day, God, we come into agreement, Father, God, that everything that belongs to Israel, Father, even of this sight, Lord, which is such a holy thing, God, is uh, rededicated, Father, and ascribed, Lord, to you, Father, and the covenant promises to their people, O Father. And, Lord, we thank you for the activity of angels, even now, Lord, release release, release, Father. God at this gateway, Father, at this appointed time of Pentecost, Lord. And Father God, that every decree that is being made, even now, Lord, is Father God recorded even in the chronicles of heaven, Lord, that this is an appointed time, Father, God, for the 
appearing, Lord, of all that you have said, Lord, uh, in covenant promises, Father, this is an appointed time for us to decree uh, and release the sovereignty of all that you have uh, said is a promise in covenant, Lord. And so, Father, we do thank you. We agree, uh, Lord, with that covenant, Father, for this site, for this altar, for this land, Lord. And we bless you this day, Father. We glorify you. We recognize, Lord, there's no king like Jesus. And we bless your name, Father, as we stand with Israel at this time. Yes, Jesus. Lord. Yes, Lord. I was sensing something as you were praying, Brenda, um, you know, because that, that place is a portal. We, we call it a portal and an opening um, to heaven. And um, there, you know, you're making decrees. And as you're making decrees, I heard the word false decrees. So in the name of Jesus, I, we break. We break every false decree that's been made about this altar, as well as the decree that, that that's not the altar for Israel. We break those decrees in the spirit and every other altar as well in the name of Jesus. We say that the truth is that those are altars that belong to Israel, and the Lord has decreed a thing into every altar, and it has been established. And we just decree that the church will awaken in Israel and will stand up and they will um, um, govern as well as watch these altars and even um, receive from within those places. It's still in the land, it's still in the atmosphere, and we just say thank you, Father. You are removing the silt and removing the, the things that have invaded and pervaded that atmosphere over every altar, especially this one. It's going to be the atmosphere of the world where we can hear the voices of angels as well as hear and receive dreams and visions, Lord, per Joel 2 in the time of Pentecost, especially in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to pray about that? Yeah, one? can I add on that? This is Wally Johnson. Yeah, go ahead. I was thinking of you too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you know, we are a royal priesthood, and as kings will take place, the scripture says that we need to stand and get and turn back the battle. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we do that as kings. We stand and declare, we lift up our hands with the authority that's been given us as kings, because we're under the king of kings, right? Our Lord, Mark, mighty God. And we declare the battle is turned at this gate. We open this gate to the host of heaven to fight on behalf of Israel. Yes. The people in the land. We lose the angels to establish the borders and enforce the borders. Amen. Yes. We charge the angels to establish the borders and enforce the borders. Yes. We need to stand. Amen. Yes. Powerful. Thank you. Powerful. Anybody? Else? All right. I, I just have one more thing. I'm, I'm seeing this. Okay. The time we're praying. Um, between Beersheba and Beth El, because Jacob went out of Beersheba to Beth El, and Abraham made covenant with God not not far from there, and Beersheba was the place where he um, was. But it says he t pitched his tent not far from where Jacob was, and it, it's just it ties into the covenant that he made. I think with both um, prophets, and also Beersheba was the first. Place that was given back to Israel after World War after um, in 1948, it was Beersheba that they that the soldiers went and discovered um, that it was given back to Israel. And I just feel like um, these two places are kind of connected as a a place where the battle is being fought. There was a battle of Beersheba, and so I don't know. I don't know. I'm just sensing this in my spirit. I'm not really it's sort of. Like you said, I'm still taking it out of the package, but um, they're close together, and they both have to do with covenant, and they both have to do with covenant with Abraham and Jacob. Yes. So, um, so I just, um, I feel like there's something. Yeah, you are. Yeah, because the Israel, when the soldiers went to Beersheba and they opened up the tomb, that was the last place when. Okay, so in 19, in um, post, when they lost Jerusalem, when they lost Israel to the Romans, um, when they lost Jerusalem, 
That was the last place the soldiers went. And it was the first place they came when they got back to Israel. So it was a reversal. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's right there next to um, next to Bethel, where they, they were connected because Jacob ran from Beersheba to Bethel, and Abraham also went from Beersheba to Bethel. So, um, so I just feel like this is the nation's starting point, part of the nation's starting point. Yeah, yeah. That bears witness to me. Yeah, the Abrahamic covenant is so central, I believe. It's so, so key, so foundational. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's powerful. That's powerful. Anybody else? Okay. Dr. Laura Judah, the Temple Mount altar. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Did I do it? Oh. Well, he gave you that. <laughs> okay, thanks. So, um, I am looking at the scripture in Second Chronicles, chapter six and seven, and um, we know that that's the place where um, Solomon had dedicated the temple to the Lord. Uh, David had sure. had purchased the land. He had pursued that land. It had been pursued for for many, many generations, and David was able to subdue the land, and then the actual commission to build the temple was given to Solomon. And so when he had completed all the building, they all of Israel came together to dedicate the temple to the Lord. And after a very good, well, he, he chose the time of the Feast of Tabernacles to actually dedicate the temple. Um, because it was to be the dwelling place of God. So I feel like that is really a significant um, connection there with, between the feasts. And so when he did that, he dedicated it to the Lord, and then the Lord appeared to him at night and said in um, chapter 7, verse 12, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, my, and my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer offered in this place. So now I have chosen and consecrated this house that my name will be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. So God made a covenant with Solomon at that place. He said that forever his eyes were going to be upon that place. And the fact that this was a temple that then got destroyed, and then when the restoration community came back from the exile, there was another temple built on that site, which was subsequently destroyed. We are now the temple of God. And so I just felt like the Lord was saying, you know, on this Pentecost, when we're celebrating the time that the church was birthed, and we became the temple of God by having the infilling of the Holy Spirit, that we are now standing in the gap. We're, we're part of the one new man, but we're waiting for that completion with Israel to become the fullness of the house of God. So we want to extend today... Um, the prayer of repentance and humbling ourselves before the Lord on behalf of the church, on behalf of the people of God, on behalf of Israel, and stand with our brothers and sisters and call God's eye back to this place where he promised to heal the land and to restore that covenant with God. So... Um, I just, as I was reading through this, I was just seeing us all, like, literally standing in Jerusalem at the site and, and making these decrees and 
you know, calling God's eye back to that actual spot in the land. So I'm going to just read through uh, quickly the different promises that were made, the, the things that Solomon asked of the Lord to do in that place. And then we can, you know, repent together and remind the Lord of his responses to each one of these promises. So the first one was swearing an oath in the temple. If a man sins against his neighbor and is made to take an oath and he comes and takes an oath before your altar in this house, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, punishing the wicked and bringing his way on his own head and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. So Father, we thank you that it is because of the blood of Jesus that we can stand before you. We can repent as as your children, as your family, as the people of God for swearing and taking oaths and ask for your forgiveness in this place, God. We call your eye back to this place and we remind you that you said your eyes are open and your ears are attentive as we offer this prayer. We call upon the uh, restoration of your covenant in this place. And we thank you for forgiving us and forgiving the people of Israel for the times that we have all sworn oaths in the temple. Thank you, Lord, that if the people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you and they return to you and confess your name and pray and make supplication before you in this house, then you hear from heaven and you forgive the sin of your people, and you bring them back to the land which you have given them and to their fathers. Now, this land has been the subject of question, Lord God, but you said you bring them back to the land, and you give them that land. It is their land, and we stand with our brothers and sisters. We confess that there has been suffering, defeat from our enemies, and exile from the land. But we confess before you, we repent before you, and we plead the blood of Yeshua over our sin and the sin of the, of the Israelite people, of the Jewish people. We ask you to forgive that sin and to bring back the covenant that you have made with your people in this place, and this land belongs to your people. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, and they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin when you afflict them. Then you hear from heaven, God, and you forgive your servants and your people. And you teach them the good way in which they should walk. And then you send rain because you have given this land to your people as an inheritance. Father, we thank you that you forgive us and we pray and confess that we have sinned against you, that Israel has sinned against you, that we, are, we confess your name, we confess the name of Yeshua in this place and in this land, and we thank you that you forgive the sin of your servants by the blood of Yeshua, and we ask Holy Spirit that you come now and teach your people the good way in which they should walk. We ask you to teach us here in America and, and your people Israel how we should walk before you. We ask you to send the rain and to restore the inheritance that you have promised as your eyes are in this place. Lord, we, we come before you and say that when there is famine and pestilence or blight or mildew, locust and grasshopper, that the enemies besiege them in their land or in their cities, whatever plague and whatever sickness there is, God. We make prayer and supplication on behalf of ourselves and on behalf of Israel, knowing that each one carries an affliction and pain. And we spread out our hands towards your house, and you hear from heaven, your dwelling place. We are your dwelling place, God, and we ask you to forgive us and to heal us, to heal your people, Israel, to render to each one according to his ways and to the hearts of those alone who know you, Lord God, that we may fear you. We cry out for the spirit of the fear of the Lord to be upon your people, upon us and our generations, upon Israel and upon her generation, upon one new man. Let your spirit of 
the fear of the Lord so that we may walk in your ways and that you would forgive our sins and heal this land and bring your people back into the fullness of this place, Lord God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anyone want to pray or decree something? Uh, hi. Hey, David. Um, well, the praise is going on there. Well, the prayer is going on. I, I kept seeing that, like on the day of, of atonement, Yom Kippur, when the Jews fast, that they've actually been fasting the bread of life. And so God is declaring that he's ending that fast of the bread of life. And so I declare a break fast over the children of Israel that have been fasting the bread of life, Yeshua HaMashiach, and I declare a hunger in the pit of their soul to be filled by the bread of life, Yeshua. Yes, Lord. Yes. And I declare an end to this famine and this fast of the bread of life. And I declare that every tribe, all 12, every tongue, wherever they are, and every nation that they are, that they will come to the saving knowledge of Yeshua and fulfill their divine purpose that that Yahweh has for them. Yes. In the mighty and powerful name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Amen. Ron, do you have something? No. Okay. <laughs> Anybody? I just uh, wanted to say finally, that on this Pentecost, as we... We are standing and we're, we're receiving. We cry out, Lord, for that receiving of a yes. filling of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That we stand before the Lord as priests and kings, just like Solomon did. Mm-hmm. We are anointed today to cry out for your fire and your glory to fall yes. in this place, God. Yes. In this place in Israel. Let your fire and your glory fall. Yeah. Oh, let yeah. the people of Israel yeah. see the fire and the glory yeah. of the Lord yeah. on the mountaintop when, when yeah. Moses was given the tablets. Yes, when the, the tongues of fire yes. came, cry out that your tongues of fire would come over this place in Israel today. Mm-hmm. And that no more would there be a threat of this land being taken away from your people, God. Because your fire and your glory are in this place perpetually yes. in the name of yes. God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Oh, Rabat Tolu Shay. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes. Yes. This is the covenant. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just share this vision. I don't have an interpretation for it, but it'll speak for it. So I see the the dome of the Temple Mount, and it's on fire. It's, you know, but it's it's actually ablaze. It's on fire. Yes. There's fire on the altar. There's fire on the altar. There's fire on the altar. There's fire on the altor. There's fire on the altar. There's fire on the altar. Thank you, Lord. 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 Break out, 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 Lord. Holy Spirit, go. Yes. Holy Spirit, spread your fire. Yes. Oh, Lord, yes. 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 Take over the land. Take over the atmosphere. Take over the land. Holy Spirit, set it ablaze once again with your glory, Lord. Take yes. your yes. glory, Lord, with your fire, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. yes. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. 
Mm. If you are the fire is burning, you will never go out. We shall we decree that we'll never let that fire go out, Lord. In yeah. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I, I see children. They're on yeah. fire. They're just, they're just like there. They're near the fire, but the cherubim and Ezekiel were ones of fire. Mm, they yeah. had fire on them. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you Lord, for your angelic host of fire yeah. in Jesus' name. Mm. Mm. Amen. Yeah, I could feel that. You know, when Elijah erected the altar, made a declaration, the fire came down on the altar. And so today, we have lifted up altars unto the Lord, which puts a demand on the fire. And so what Mary saw was, prophetically, because we have lifted up these altars to him, he has responded and sent fire on the altars. They will not go out. And the sacrifice is received. And we're going to see a harvest. We're going to see an awakening. We're going to see the gate of heaven open. And revelation is going to go to small and great. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Something is shifted. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, thank you, Lord. You are the King of glory. Thank you, Lord. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord yeah. mighty in battle. We lift up yeah. the heads on the gates. We lift it up yeah. the gates of the door. That the King yeah. of glory may come in. Yeah. Who is this King of glory? Oh, he is the king of glory, the Lord of heaven. Yeah. Is the king of glory. Yeah, go ahead. And do yes. That. Yes. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. I keep seeing that verse. The fire must not go out. My fire by the altar must not go out. Thank you, Lord. We decree, Lord, we will tend to this fire, Lord. Yeah. Keep the fire burning, Lord. Yeah. We are that temple that needs to keep on burning, Lord. Yeah. Yes. We are that yes. temple that needs yes. to have the fire. Yes. Let you go even today, Lord. Let your fire fall. Yeah. Lord, let it not go out, yeah. Lord. Over us, yeah. earth, over Israel, Lord, and yeah. the land of the people. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. What agreement can there be between the temple of God and idols? We mm. kings say no agreement. We yes. all meaning all agreement. No agreement, yes. We are the people of God. We yes. are the temple yes. of God. The so, Father, because of what you've done and what you're doing and who you've made us, yes. hold you to your promise and your word. You said you dwell in and with us. Thank you. You dwell among us. You walk in and with us. Yes. That's the revelation of who you are. On this day, we thank you for revealing yourself. Yes, Lord. That we may be your people. Mm-hmm. As you reveal, we will see who we really are. Mm-hmm. The land will no longer be divided. And a new man will no longer be divided. We will be one as you are one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. Thank we you. Are yes. your people. We are your temple. Yes. By your light, by your fire, by your power, mm-hmm. we Thank are. Thank you, Lord. Because yeah. you are. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Thank you. Mm. Well, Jerry, do you want to go on to communion? Do you, do you have a plan for communion? Can you see all this up? And is there something else you want to do? Can't really hear. Oh, sorry, I'm having trouble hearing. Um, do y'all have communion available to you? We'll have to get it. So why don't we yeah, take yeah. a few minutes to go get your your bread and your bread juice? Yeah. We'll we'll a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes. the picture of Jerusalem in the background. Well, this is the, this is the wall here. And that's where they're going up. An older picture, I think. You want to share that what you saw? Hey, Mary. Yeah. Yeah. So David had uh, after the fire uh -huh. David saw something following that after. Okay. Yeah. And so, what, we and so okay. what I what I saw is is I saw Ruach come in and blanket the entire land of Israel, and he just comforted his people and. Um, and just where that scripture says in Isaiah, comfort ye, oh, comfort my people, I saw him come in like a blanket, like, like a comforter, literally, and rest on the land of Israel to bring comfort and security to them. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Amen. They have it out there too. I know Jeff's on his way to. Does everyone have their elements? Yes. Okay. I'm waiting for David to go back to the screen. <laughs> oh, they're waiting they... for you. Just be on the screen, I guess. There you go. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Jerry. Father, in this place of covenant, recognizing that this is the covenant that you've made with the house of Israel, that they should all know you, it is such an honor <coughs> to remember the Lamb of God and what he's done for us and for Israel. We bless this bread. We lift it up. And Father, we thank you for providing the bread of life for your people Israel and for us and for America. But moving forward, 
past this pandemic, we remember that when David made a, a, a sacrifice on the threshing floor that he got from Ornan, the plague was broken and there was a new beginning. And we declare a new beginning for America and for Israel on this place, mm-hmm. this altar, this threshing floor. As so we partake of the Lamb of God, we declare new life. Yeshua's name. Mary, did you want to um, do the blood or have somebody do that? How about Jeff? Do you want to do the blood? Or have my husband do it? Jeff, you need to unmute. Yep, I do. Maybe wait, that's a second. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, and I really like how this states that this cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. And we say yes. These agreements today with the altars are confirmed with blood. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. I hear a shofar somewhere. Amen. <laughs> This was tremendous. I didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, just new in part. Yeah, just, and just said, well, I'm just going to follow Jeff, uh, Jerry's lead here. <laughs> and, but uh, now I'm, I see the fullness of it. So it's just uh, it's such a gift. I've heard the teachings on every altar. And then, you know, intercessors like myself and Linda and Ramada, we love to hear the teaching and then it just turns itself into a prophetic decree and so that's uh that's, that's where the joy comes and so thank you for all your work and, and having this because that's what i don't think i've ever heard teaching jerry when we first presented on may 13th of, of about the altars and their importance and significance and why there's such a war 
over that very land. That makes so much sense. But I'm, I'm full of expectation now. We're going to see some, something powerful. Uh, yeah, David uh, commented that there was a lot accomplished today. But I think that's true. Yeah, I think so. Ramana, do you have any comments? Yeah, I yeah I do. Um, I was just as I was sitting here, one of the things that kept coming up in my spirit is that this is so significant that this was done during um, the Feast of Pentecost, um, yeah. and that it has a very um, significant um, meaning as well as impact. And what I hear God saying is that just as the disciples gathered together during the Feast of Pentecost that was the Jewish feast. And as that feast has been intermeshed with um, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and what as believers we, we celebrate as the Feast of, um, of, of Pentecost when Holy Spirit came, that this is going to be a time for Israel as well as for the body of Christ, where we're going to see such an outpouring of his spirit that will not only bring um, re refreshing um, and revival and reformation, and that's the one word I've been hearing over the past week or so, is that he's bringing reformation, and that that will not only be reformation to the body of Christ, but it will be a reformation to Israel. And that we're going to see a significant, I hear God saying, there's going to be a significant um, expression that we're going to see in the natural and also in the spirit realm, uh, uh, the impact of what he is doing and how he is honoring this, um, this way that we have honored um, Israel, as well as um, this celebration of the feast, as well as the restoration of um of those altars, um, and um, I hear God saying, you know, I, I am about to move in ways that you've never seen me move before. Amen. I'm bringing a new thing into the land um, and into the earth, says the Lord. And watch me as I move, rest with my fire. Watch for the signs, the physical signs that, that indicate what I'm doing in Israel as well as in the United States, as this covenant that has been uh, has been um, renewed and forged between um, the United States and Israel, there's going to be such an impact. Uh, I'm about to do something so tremendous, and it's going to um, it's going to shock people. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. You know, in response to that, to uh, you know, what, a, what I was sensing, um, sort of, you, 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 you prophesied so well, um, but we've gone another level. It's almost like we had the convocation of the 13th, where we realigned with Israel, America with Israel, we decreed the, the support, etc., cetera, for the whole prayer network leaders that were there, and set the foundation, but I've always had this sense that there was something more. And so when Jerry, you came up with this, this was the more. But we've almost as if we got another step further into that that alignment, into that um, support of Israel. And I believe that deeper mysteries and revelations will be now released because there's so much that is going to unlock in the days ahead about Israel. I really believe that. There's just so much there. It's such a treasure of, of, of revelation in that land. So we're yeah. sensing this is a, another level, yeah. and there's more to come. More to come. What's that? Did you have something? <laughs> yeah, if you guys heard that, um, possible yeah. number said there's going to be fire in all the altars. He's going to sell him, show himself true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many altars are there in, in Israel? Margie has something? 
Um, the night that my husband was emailing to you about the covenant altars, mm -hmm. I'm dreaming about um, Mount Calvary in the cross. So he told me that he's communicating to you that morning, and at dawn, the Lord has uh, spoken to him many times about the covenant altars. So I was amazed because while he is thinking about this and emailing to you at the same time, I have my dream. And I told him, I said, this is my dream. I saw a cross, and in the cross, there is another cross, which is the pendant of the necklace. So I told him, what does this mean? I said, and then somebody spoke behind me and said that the cross is the provision. And now I confirm that Mount Calvary, where the cross is, is the provision and for the uh, Israelis and for the Jewish people that provision and salvation comes on Yeshua alone and not on anything else. And now I understand that my dream about the covenant altar, which is one among this, is the Mount Calvary, which uh, my husband and I were visiting there when we were visiting the covenant altars. And we as a church, we have the authority because when we went there, the Lord showed us the Hebrew letter Lamed, which is authority. And who has the authority more? We as a church has the authority to claim these altars because if we will not, who will? So I'm just declaring today that the dream that I have, which is the, the cross, is for the Jewish people and for us, the Gentiles also, that provision will come alone on Yeshua and that it is reflected and pictured on the dream, which is the cross. So I just want to declare today that the Jew and the Gentile has the authority to claim the finished work of Yeshua and the Calvary and that provision will come alone on Yeshua HaMashiach and no one else. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, it's, it's 5.25, and I need to call this. And so um, we'd like to close this in prayer. My parents said something. Anybody want to call in prayer? Do I have to pick? Okay. Linda. <laughs> well, Father, we, we do, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor, Lord, to stand in for the apple of your eye for Israel today, Lord. And all of the decrees, Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for these altars, Father, uh, Lord, and the calling back and the remembrance, Lord, of the covenants that were made, God. And Lord, we thank you that they are yes and amen. And we thank you for promises fulfilled. We thank you, Lord, that you are mindful, Father, to do all that you said you would do in your covenant promises. You are a covenant-keeping God. And so, Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, today. We thank you, Father, for the zeal of revival, of obedience and worship coming back into the people, Lord. As, Father, God, we look to you, Lord, and believe in you, Father, for many souls for the harvest, God. And so, Lord, we thank you that the fire has fallen, Lord. And, God, that we're going to see signs and signals yes. and manifestations that declare the glory of you, Lord, in the land of Israel. And, Father, even unto our nation and all that stand with them. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. 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 All right, everybody. It's great. Praying with you. <laughs> 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 That's great. Be blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Until we we'll get together Bye. again. Amen. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mary. Bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Good night.